Chapter One, The Last Day. Right up till that very moment, I didn't believe it would really happen. But suddenly, there I was, surrounded by boxes and cartons packed tightly with just about everything we owned. All morning long, we had been working, filling up these boxes and cartons. In fact, Papi and Tito and Johnny, my two brothers, had gone out to find more boxes and buy rope and sealing tape. Even though mommy, papi, and everybody had spoken of practically nothing else for the past month, I had just kept thinking that moving day was still a long way off. But today was our last day. Tomorrow we would be moving into a brand new neighborhood. The worst part of it was leaving all my friends and my block. I didn't remember ever living any place else. That's because, as mommy said, I was only a baby and couldn't even talk when we moved to this apartment and this neighborhood. I looked up at the huge blank space staring at me over the living room couch. Mommy's brightly colored tapestry of the Last Supper showing Jesus and the apostles seated around a long table set with loaves of bread and whole fish was gone. That tapestry was mommy's favorite piece in the apartment. She and Papi had, brought, had bought it when they had set up house as newlyweds. It was the first luxury we permitted ourselves in our very own apartment, she had explained. When people admired it, mommy felt proud. Now that it was packed away too, I knew it was official, and we didn't live here anymore. Felita! Felita, what are you doing? I'm just thinking, mommy. Come on now, don't look so grumpy. You'll see, you are gonna like the new neighborhood. There she was, smiling again, acting like nothing bad was happening. It made no sense to talk to her. I'm going out to play, mommy. I promised Gigi, Paquito, and Con Consuela I would meet them down by the stoop. Felita, you know we still have lots to do, especially today. Please, please, mommy. This is my last day to be with my friends, and I already promised to meet them. All right, Felita, but only for a little while, and then you plan to get back here and help. Understand? Your father and brothers can't do it all. Besides, Papi might be working tonight at the plant. We need the money, so he'll take overtime if he can get it. That means we still have lots to pack and you have responsibilities here. I ran out as fast as I could. Was I glad to get away from her and all that packing? I looked around outside. Boy, I loved my block. I knew just about everybody on this street. I could stroll along and say hello to somebody practically every minute. I saw my friends walking toward me. Hey, Felita, over here. There was Paquito with Consuela and her little sister, Joni. Consuela always had to mind Joni. Like it or not, when Consuela was there, so was Joni. Where's Gigi? asked Consuela. She's supposed to meet us here, but let's go down to the Chiperia store and shop around. I told Gigi that's where we would all be in case we didn't wait for her. We walked down to the Chiperia store. Everybody called it this because you could buy anything there real cheap. The sign outside read, Goldstein's Household Mark, New and Used Bargains. Mr. Goldstein wasn't around anymore. Mr. Perez was the owner. He was nice and didn't mind when we just looked around and didn't buy. You could buy secondhand toys here. Once I bought a used jump rope. It looked new, with shiny red wooden handles. I shared it with Gigi. We shared everything. Grown-ups could buy pots and pans, even clo clothing, in this store. <coughs> Today we were checking if there might be a yellow party dress for sale. In just 
two weeks, Gigi was having her birthday party. She was going to be nine years old. Gigi is older than me by five months. We had planned to wear the exact, exact same kind of dress. This way, we could look just like sisters. Gigi is an only child, and I have two older brothers. That's why, when Gigi and I were little, we decided to become sisters. Consuela has three older sisters, and Paquito comes from a large family. He has five sisters and three brothers. Paquito was somewhere in the middle. Even though all of us are really tight and good friends, everyone knows how Gigi and I feel about each other. I was really disappointed when mommy told me I couldn't have a new dress for the party. It was all on account of that dumb move that we couldn't afford, that we couldn't afford it. Gigi's dress was so pretty. It was a bright yellow made of soft, silky material with a lace collar and velvet trimming. Our only hope was to look around in the Chiperia store. All my friends agreed to chip in and help me buy a dress if we got lucky and found one. Felita, Consuela, Paquito. We turned around. There was Gigi. Did you find it? She asked. Not yet. I answered. The stuff here ain't so good, said Paquito. Let's look some more anyway, Gigi responded. We carefully inspected the racks filled with used clothing. Most of the clothes weren't even pretty or new looking. Some of them needed washing and mending. You can find you find something you like, Mr. Perez asked. He was chewing on his cigar. He always had an unlit, half-smoked cigar in his mouth. When he spoke, it remained clenched tightly between his teeth. No, not today, I answered. Well, you try again, yes? Sure, I answered. Well, that was that. I wouldn't be shopping here again. I felt miserable. Not only wouldn't I be living on the block when Gigi had her party, but I wasn't getting my dress either. Gigi put her arm around my shoulder. Come on, Felita, she said. Let's hang out. I could see she was feeling pretty bad herself. We all headed back to my stoop. As we passed by Doña Josefina's bodega, we heard her call out, Felita, you moving today or tomorrow? She was standing at the entrance looking at me. Tomorrow, Doña Josefina. Well, don't look so sad, eh? I heard you're going to live in a better neighborhood. I guess so, I shrugged. Don't forget to come by later with your mother and say goodbye. Doña Josefina bent over toward me and winked. I got a little special treat for you. I give it to you later, eh? That sure didn't sound like her. Usually she was telling us not to touch anything. She always watched to make sure we didn't swipe some of her delicious candy. Dulce de coco, coconut candy. White, crunchy, sweet, and so delicious. Doña Josefina made it herself. She set it out on the counter in large trays. I hoped it was some of that candy she was going to give me. Oh, man, I could already taste it melting in my mouth. I was planning to come by later with mommy, all right. Renaldo's re record and TV radio repair shop was blasting out a loud and fast number. Right away, Joni began to dance, shaking, turning, and stepping right there on the sidewalk. People standing around began to laugh. Others stopped just to watch her. Joni is a terrific show-off. She knows she can get away with all that carrying on because she's only five. Isn't she cute? A lady said. Look, mira, que linda. She's so pretty. And can she dance? A man smiled, nodding at everyone. When Joni acted like this, I mostly got embarrassed and walked away. 
But now, looking at her and knowing that I wasn't going to be around much longer, I had to admit she was a cute kid after all. It was getting late and I realized I would have to get back upstairs. I didn't want to think about tomorrow, that I was not going to be hanging out with my friends on my block. As we walked along, I looked inside Wong's laundry, where mommy sent Papi's shirts sometimes. Maybe I should say goodbye to them. Mrs. Wong was busy working and Mr. Wong wasn't around. I decided to keep going. Bernie's candy store was empty except for old Bernie, who was sitting reading the paper and petting his cat as usual. I wished at that very moment I could treat us all to something, but even though I had taken every cent I had with me on account of the dress, I still didn't have enough money. We reached my stoop and sat down. Everyone was real quiet. Hey, I said, breaking the silence. You are all coming to visit me in our new apartment. Even you, Joni. Consuela, you can bring her. When? Joni jumped up and down. Real soon. Just as soon as we get settled there. What you kids got, what you kids doing here? Someone yelled. I saw Tito waving at us. He and Johnny were coming up the block, carrying some cartons and packages. Felita, Tito continued, you're supposed to be working, not goofing off. Right, Johnny? I was working, and you know it. Mommy gave me permission to play outside for a little while. Yeah, sure, Tito responded. I'll bet she didn't. She did, too. Sometimes Tito could be a terrible pest. You better be upstairs, girl, before you get it. Tito put down his bundles and made a gesture as if he were going to smack me. Like this. He swung in my direction. Johnny! I screamed. Tell him to stop it. I couldn't stand that silly Tito, especially today. All right, Johnny said. Leave her alone. Johnny was the oldest and my favorite. Johnny is 13 and a half and Tito is 12. Johnny looks just like mommy. He has light brown skin and short black curly hair. Tito looks like Papi. He is blonde and has very pale pink skin. Mommy was always telling Papi, God gave you one child and me another, but Felita, she belongs to both of us. That was because I looked like a mixture of mommy and papi. Johnny, I was just telling my friends they could come to visit us at our new place, right? I asked. Sure, it ain't far. You could walk there, Johnny said. It will take about 20 minutes if you go fast and half an hour if you take your time. By bus, it's only like five minutes. Great, Paquito said. Fantastic, Gigi smiled. Listen, Tito said. We'll be coming back to visit the block. After all, I got all my friends here, so you know you'll be seeing my face. In fact, it's a big drag having to go someplace else and trying to make new friends again. Don't you want to move? asked Paquito. No way, Tito answered. It ain't us. It's our parents who want to leave. Right, Johnny, Felita? Johnny and I nodded in agreement. Everybody says you are all moving into a way better neighborhood, said Paquito. I suppose that's so, said Johnny, but we are sure gonna miss everybody. There are no Ricans where we're going, said Tito. Who lives there, asked Consuela. Mostly Irish and German people. Something like that, Johnny said. At least that's the way it looked to me. Mostly gringos, that's who, Tito said. Well, you look like a gringo yourself, said Consuela, so you should be right at home. I may look like a gringo, but I'm Puerto Rican. And them that don't like it can shove it. 
Where, asked Paquito, way down yonder in their beehives. Everyone laughed. Felita, Felita. I could hear mommy's voice. I looked up and there she was, looking down at us from our window. Mira, all of you, it's time to get up here now. I gotta go, I said. Don't forget, said Gigi, you will be coming to my party and maybe you can stay overnight. That would be great. I'll ask mommy. Anyway, I'll be at that party. Nobody could ever keep me away. We'll see you soon, Paquito said. At your new house, right? Asked Consuela. Me too, me too, Joni giggled. My brothers went on ahead of me, taking their packages and cartons. I put on a great big smile. See you guys. I ran up the stoop steps and headed upstairs. A sinking feeling was making me feel sick inside. I could hardly climb the two flights of stairs. Each step was taking me farther away from my friends. It wasn't fair. Nobody had asked me if I wanted to move. Anytime one of us kids complained, Papi would always say the same thing. It's for better schools. You children will thank us. Tito always spoke his mind, but Johnny was different. He was quiet by nature. Maybe that's why Papi always tried to reason with him. Johnny, you are the oldest, so you must be the one to understand and set a good example for your brother and sister. Think of your future and theirs. You will go to a better high school from that neighborhood and then college. Johnny is real smart. He's best in math. Someday, Papi and Mommy say, Johnny is going to be a scientist or something very special. Tito is smart too, but not like Johnny. Tito likes to goof off and hang out too much. Papi said that Tito needs a good school more than anybody else because he needs the discipline. I finally reached my floor and went into the apartment. I heard Mommy's voice. Felita, what took you so long? I thought you were never getting up here. Mommy was sorting out some clothes. Now your father is coming back soon with some very large cartons. We have to make room. Let's start labeling and putting aside these boxes that are already packed. I began to work alongside Mommy, stealing boxes. I wondered what our new apartment would look like. I had seen the new neighborhood and the building, but I had never been inside. Mommy, what's our new place look like? I asked. It looks something like this apartment, except it's laid out a little different and we've got a much larger and nicer kitchen. You'll like it. Wait, you'll be as pleased as I am. Early the next morning after breakfast, I looked out the front window most people were still indoors and the street was quiet. Everybody was rushing around me. Mommy was arguing with the moving men. That's my good dishes. You be careful, be careful. Don't drop that box, whatever you do. Papi was helping the moving men take down the large furniture. He was really working up a sweat. His shirt was all wet and stuck to his skin. Papi is very strong. He works at a big food plant way downtown. He repairs heavy machinery there. Every time there is trouble with equipment, Papi has to repair it. Felita, mommy called out. What are you doing standing about with your mouth open? Catching flies? Please help. Make sure everything in your room is packed away. Quickly, I went into my old room. Everything was disappearing rapidly. My bed and chair were already gone. I started stuffing some crayons, the socks I found on the floor, and other odds and ends into boxes. Finally, everything was taken out of the apartment, and we all went downstairs. Papi promised me I could ride in the moving van with him. Mommy and my brothers were taking the bus. I looked at the quiet street and glanced over at Doña Josefina's. 
I hadn't gone by to see her with mommy last night, like she asked. Her store was open, but I still wasn't going over. As much as I loved that dulce de coco, I wasn't in the mood. I got into the van and sat on papi's lap. He hugged me. Well, we're off to a better future, Felita, papi whispered. I didn't answer. In a little while, my street would be filled with lots of people and kids playing. I would be someplace else and no longer part of them. I tried not to cry. After the truck pulled away and turned the corner, I leaned over and looked out the window. Our old neighborhood was far behind us. <laughs>